Content warning. This episode contains lore. None of it is important. review with me? Oh, uh, go ahead and start without me. You mean it? Yeah, it's gonna be a while. Y you're really sure? I mean, I'm sure nothing crazy will happen. At last, I'm gonna have my revenge on that mat with a little school shooting. Or should I say cruel shooting? <laughs> Cause there's no school. I I'm just gonna shoot him in his apartment. There were some movies. Terrible movies. Movies so awful. No one would touch. Then came a Matt. Sad little Matt. Matt then decided these movies to watch. Today's episode, They Saved Hitler's Brain. Don't tell Matt I'm drinking his flaming hot Mountain Dew. You know what? That's not anywhere near as bad as I thought it was going to be. Uh, hello internet. I'm called Matt, and today we have a real B-movie classic. They Saved Hitler's Brain. They Saved Hitler's Brain was released in 1968 and would be the final film of proto-exploitation director David Bradley. It's hard to know who to focus on in terms of cast. There's people with notable credits, but no one you're likely to recognize right off. Mostly it's minor TV actors with a few character actors known for some older films. Although nearly all of their filmographies end at They Saved Hitler's Brain, so it was a real career killer. Hell, Nandor Pavia, best known for his role in Creature from the Black Lagoon, was actually physically dead two years before the film's release. However, its greatest legacy is perhaps its role as something of an inside joke among certain comedians during the 80s and 90s. It's referenced in a number of Simpsons episodes, Jim Varney and co. would slip references to it into earnest films, Weird Al would mention it in his song Midnight Star. They're keeping Hitler's brain alive! Hell, the way they keep Hitler's head alive may well have been partial inspiration for the heads in jars in Futurama. The film even won the first World's Worst Film Festival in 1979, which David Bradley apparently found quite funny. And now I'm just gonna wait for Matt to show up. But I'm sure nothing crazy will happen. Hey, Matt! Oh, actually, I'm new here. I'm Christian Matt. Shut up! Christian Matt? Christian Matt. Oh, it looks like he started the video, but didn't finish it? Eh, well, I didn't really want to do a duet with him anyways. Uh, I'm going on without him. This is They Saved Hitler's Brain. Hey, Flamin' Hot Mountain Dew. You know, it's not as bad as I expected. But it's not very spicy, and it's got a really weird aftertaste. We open on a scientist who has the formula, but some villainous people are watching, and he blows up. Then we cut to the CID headquarters? You know, the Central Intelligence Department. 
We meet Discount Dennis Hopper, an agent named Vic, who reveals the formula was an antidote to some mysterious gas, and that the dead scientist had the only copy of it, although he wasn't the inventor. Later, a woman pulls up to Vic's house with a problem. I'm looking for 2713 Mills Road, and none of the streets have any names, and none of the houses have any numbers up here. Now, as a long-time delivery guy, I can say this is absolutely accurate. There are so many houses with no numbers on them. How am I supposed to deliver to you if there's no numbers on the house? Put numbers on your house, people! This is Tony, and she's been assigned to this case with Vic. And there are a lot of rumors about uh, former Nazis involved with the government. Yeah, those rumors pop up during the lull in flying saucer reports. Yeah, the American government would never hire Nazi scientists. That's ridiculous. We get a lot of boring technical talk that honestly doesn't add much. And we get a long scene of a guy being kidnapped. But Tony tails them. God, you guys are really stretching to get to an hour and a half, aren't ya? It would seem the Blues Brothers here have kidnapped the one doctor who knows the antidote, but accidentally give him an overdose. She tries to get word to Vic, but she's shot and killed? Well, not quite. She shows up to Vic's house to save him, and then she dies. Not that it helps, as he rolls his car into an electric transformer and also dies. Yeah, at just under half an hour into the film, the two lead characters get killed and are never seen again. They don't even get mentioned by anyone else. Uh, oh, oh, actually, um, it looks like Christian Matt missed this part of the intro. I I'll just read it now. See, the film was originally released as Mad Men of Mandoras, a film that was only an hour 14. So to pad it out for television showings, they filmed some new scenes and gave it a crazy new title that actually spoils the film. But then again, Mad Men of Mandoras is such a generic title, I'd much rather watch something called They Saved Hitler's Brain. There are one or two scenes from Mad Men of Mandoras that are missing, but for the most part, after Vic and Tony die, it is exactly the same movie. Although I probably don't have to tell you this, but the pacing is much better in the other version. Weird to start something with one character, only for them to abruptly die and then just move on with another character. I wonder where Christian Matt is. Anyways, we meet Phil Day and his wife Kathy, who are told by a mysterious man that they must save Dr. Coleman, the guy with the antidote, from his homeland of Mandoras, right before he also gets shot. This movie kills characters like it's an internet review show. <laughs> Yo, dude, it's me, Beach Party Man! <laughs> Phil tries to call headquarters, but at this point it's pretty clear the chief's in on it. So off to Mandoras, where indeed, they're being tailed. And Phil gets in a fight with... himself? I'm not alone thinking these two look exactly the same, his own wife mistakes him for the assailant. But Phil's clone turns out to be on his side and gives them information about the Nazis who've taken up residence in Mandoras. Nazis? Surely a few fanatics can't upset the world. Yeah, that's what we all said back in 2016. Didn't work out for us. The rumor was that Hitler was getting his daily shots of hormones from a battery of doctors. But the truth was worse than that. Oh man, this guy's got a future making shows for History Channel. Apparently Hitler was obsessed with living forever, which I buy, but also he claims Hitler had several public stand-ins who would be assassinated instead of him, which I have sincere doubts about. Also, he hilariously refers to Hitler as Mr. H. But not Mr. H. Which sounds like he's trying to get around YouTube monetization. And now Mr. H has the antidote to the deadly gas, which could spell trouble for everyone. You see that man down there with a the beard? Yeah. 
That is Vasquez. Oh, remember him. He'll be important later. Their response to learning this information is to go to a swing in 50s rock and roll joint where they find a friend from America? Apparently she was kidnapped by Germans and told to just stay in Mandoras. They put up the money for her to party a while. She just can't call anyone from back home, which actually sounds like a pretty good deal. Yo, any Nazis want to kidnap me to a South American vacation? I don't know who this girl is. I know they mentioned a girl having been kidnapped, but she gets the kind of blink and you miss it mention that makes it odd when she actually shows up in any capacity with no explanation. Maybe if the leads didn't know her and she then introduced herself, but the movie just acts like we're supposed to know who she is based on, like, a line of dialogue from earlier. Oh, and like 10 minutes later, we find out she's Kathy's sister. I feel like my sister has been kidnapped and it's maybe related to the kidnapping of this scientist should have been the setup and not a random Hispanic man told me to come here right before dying. And the important beard guy you were told to remember? Yeah, he gets killed. No one in this movie is important. Ow! Hey, uh, baby, it's me, 80s Matt. And I'm here to- They use the shooting as a distraction to kidnap Kathy and her sister, and Phil is framed for the murder. But then they're all just taken to see the president? Who takes them to see the professor who's refused to give up the antidote despite being tortured. But like all good Nazis, these guys are way too sensitive and it only takes a few smart remarks from Phil before they go, Fuck you, Hitler time! And there he is, the man of the hour. Well, actually an hour and a half in this cut. Although more like ten seconds before they cut back to the jail cell. Also, it seems like they saved a little more than Hitler's brain. Looks like they've kept the whole head, and in some shots he even has shoulders. Fortunately, as it turns out, the people of Mandoras hate the Nazis taking over the island and help Phil and co. escape. Can we talk about how the Nazis are just speaking English to Mr. H, even while he speaks German? You will see your great victory, my Führer. That I promise you. And then they remove a wax head that doesn't even look that much like the actor. Kathy and Phil escape to town, and the others just fuck off, I guess. Got a flashlight, Casey, so keep Maybe hide in that very dark spot next to you and not directly in the light? Luckily, Phil turns this Nazi into a good Nazi, but not before discovering their plot to release the deadly gas throughout the town. Well, that's an easy fix. The professor still has the antidote. So naturally, they have to use grenades to stop it. And that's how they kill Mr. H. Little anticlimactic, if you ask me. This is one of the few changes they've made from the original Mad Men of Mandoras, and it's one of the dumbest. In the original, you do get to see Mr. H's head burning alive. And, well, it's clearly the wax head just melting, but, you know, I at least want to see the fucker die. And they all live happily ever after. Well, except Vic and Tony. And that's They Saved Hitler's Brain. Funny in concept, but kinda dull in execution. Honestly, I remember this being much funnier than it ended up being. Sure, killing off the main characters and replacing them 30 minutes in is hilarious, and of course the stuff with Hitler's head in a jar is very amusing. But this movie drags a lot. Particularly in the Vic and Tony section, but it still takes its sweet time, even in the parts that aren't supposed to be padding. It's a movie best watched when you've got a bunch of friends over to laugh at the silly parts and talk through the boring parts. And speaking of watching this with other people, I better call Christian Matt. Mm, I think you're cuter. I think you're cuter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hold on. It's he than Matt. I better take this. Hello. Hey man, where'd you go? Oh, uh, well, I got shot, and they mistook me for you, and they sent me to sexy hell. Oh, I'm sorry, man. I'll, I'll pull a few strings and get you brought back here. Oh no, actually, uh, sexy Satan and I hit it off pretty well. Oh. Are you gonna finish the video? 
Oh yeah, I, I guess I should do that. Baby. Mm. I need to go back to the physical world. Mm. Mm. Just for a second, I'll be right back. Okay. I love you. I love you too. Okay, I've returned. What is it you need? Well, I pretty much did everything, but you're welcome to do the sign-off. Yeah, sure thing. Uh, if you like exploitation films that are 90% one movie, but then have new sh scenes just shoved in there for a more extravagant release, you might like a review of Snuff. Uh, and until next time, I'm Christian Matt. And I'm Matt. And this is Matt's Funtime Weird Movie Show. just laying here. Yeah, that is odd, isn't it? No, oh, that was me, Janitor Matt. Yeah, I clean up all the dead bodies that seem to pile up around here. It... Matt! Yeah, shit, you're right. Who's gonna clean up his body? Eh, we probably needed him. Don't you dare. Don't do it, don't. There's not even smoke coming out of it. <laughs> <laughs>